Hello everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak to you today. This conference comes at a time when energy and energy security is right at the top of the government's agenda, as seen in this week's Queen's speech. So I'm very grateful to have the chance to talk to you today about our plans. Last month, we published the British Energy Security Strategy. This represents an increase in ambition for an energy agenda that began with the Prime Minister's 10-point plan in autumn 2020 and has continued through the Energy White Paper, the Net Zero Strategy and Sectoral Strategies for Hydrogen, Heat and Buildings and Industrial Energy. Our vision for energy is clear. A decisive shift away from imported fossil fuels and an orderly transition to a clean energy future, the essential foundation of a prosperous net zero economy by 2050. I'd like to tell you about how the government is turning our energy policies into delivery. But first, let me say how I fully recognise how concerned households and businesses are about the cost of energy right now. We are delivering a £9.1 billion energy bill support package for domestic consumers, which includes a £150 non-repayable council tax reduction for most households in England, with Barnet consequentials uh, for the devolved administrations, and a £200 energy bill reduction in October for all households in Great Britain to be recovered from bills from 2023 onwards. We are extending support for the Energy Intensive Industries Compensation Scheme for a further three years to help those energy intensive industries that are struggling with bills and intend to increase the aid intensity to up to 100%. We are also taking action to promote energy efficiency. Helping consumers manage their energy demand is critical to keeping bills affordable in the face of rising prices. The heat and building strategy set out an ambitious package of measures which we are busy implementing. However, I want to focus on the power sector, given the role of electricity in decarbonising the energy system. By 2050, clean electricity will be the predominant form of energy. Hence, our world-leading commitment to achieve fully decarbonised power by 2035, subject to security of supply. The backbone of our power system will be renewables, nuclear and carbon capture utilisation and storage, CCUS. We will have one power CCUS plant in operation by the middle of this decade. We have set new ambitions for renewables and nuclear through the energy security strategy, up to 50 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2030, including up to 5 gigawatts of innovative floating wind and up to 24 gigawatts of nuclear by 2050, which would represent 25% of our projected demand. We intend to take one nuclear project to final investment decision in this parliament and two more in the next parliament. We are open to both large-scale plants and advanced nuclear technologies, including small modular reactors or SMRs. Critically, new generating capacity has to be delivered through a coherent whole system approach. This means promoting system flexibility through more interconnection with continental markets, more storage, including long duration technologies and hydrogen, which could substitute for gas as a key peaking technology. Like many countries, we see clean hydrogen as a potential game changer, not just for power, but in transport, industry and heat. This is why we have committed in the energy security strategy to double our ambition for low carbon hydrogen production to be 10 gigawatts by 2030. A whole system approach means reforming system governance. We are creating an expert impartial future system operator or FSO to shape our new energy system. The FSO will take on the existing responsibilities of the electricity system operator and the longer term planning, forecasting and market strategy functions for gas. We are also reimagining our approach to the design and delivery of networks. We will reform how offshore wind is connected to land based networks and begin implementing the necessary regulatory, legislative and policy changes. Next month, we will publish the holistic network design. It will encapsulate how we are adopting a more strategic approach to citing offshore transmission infrastructure. 
Our transition to a clean energy future means reviewing electricity market arrangements. We will set out the case for change and high level options for reform as part of a consultation this summer. Delivering a successful transition to a clean energy future means tackling critical dependencies for building out new infrastructure at scale and at pace. We are particularly focused on the role of the planning system in supporting the deployment of offshore wind. We have set a new ambition to reduce the time for planning consent from currently up to four years down to just one year as part of cutting in half the sometimes 13 years it can take to develop and deploy an offshore wind farm. Finally, as I mentioned, I'm delighted that the Queen's speech includes the commitment to introduce an energy bill in the new parliamentary session. Key parts of our energy transformation require new legislation. So we are moving forward the powers with the powers needed to establish the FSO and to introduce the business models for CCUS and hydrogen, enabling necessary investment in these critical technologies. The full bill will be published as it enters Parliament in the coming weeks. Let me conclude by reiterating that the government is absolutely focused on turning strategy into delivery, but success will depend as much on the actions of industry as policy makers and regulators. I look forward to deepening our partnership to ensure that we are successful in this national endeavour. Thank you so much for your time and your attention, and I hope the rest of this conference leads to fruitful discussions and developments. Thank you.